Hello, History Hatters! The DuPont Circle neighborhood of Washington, D.C. is replete with sites of historical significance. Perhaps one of the most unexpected landmarks is the first headquarters of the Church of Scientology. Located just a few blocks from DuPont Circle at 1812 19th Street Northwest, this Mediterranean Revival-style press brick and Indiana limestone building erected in 1904 is now called the L. Ron Hubbard House. The church leased this building in 1955, and it functioned as the founding church of Scientology of Washington, D.C. until the early 1970s. In the early 2000s, the church purchased the property and transformed it into a museum, which opened in 2007, focused on the history of the founding church and the life of Scientology's founder, L. Ron Hubbard. Let's step inside. This room, the reception area, still serves to welcome guests as it did in the 50s and 60s. It also houses a collection of exhibits featuring Hubbard's early years. Notably, Hubbard spent four months of his childhood in Washington, D.C. and was active in Boy Scout Troop 10, including joining other scouts in a trip to the White House to meet President Calvin Coolidge. It was here that he achieved the rank of Eagle Scout at age 13. He later attended George Washington University as an undergraduate student from 1930 to 32. He was a member of the professional engineering fraternity Phi Theta Xi, served as president of an aviation gliding club, and published his first article in a magazine called The Sportsman Pilot. He also contributed as a reporter to the university's newspaper, The Hatchet, and published a monthly literary review, to which he contributed by including some of his own fictional stories and plays. He organized a summer vacation expedition to the Caribbean on board a 200-foot-long schooner with some 50 other students he recruited for the journey, but the expedition suffered from adverse weather conditions. Ultimately, Hubbard's involvement with extracurricular activities overshadowed his grades, thus he decided not to continue his studies at GW beyond his sophomore year. Nevertheless, Hubbard returned to D.C. in 1933, and he met his first wife, Margaret Grubb, who was also interested in aviation. The pair met on the airfield of Congressional Airport near Rockville, Maryland, a training ground for civilian pilots. While living in Montgomery County, Maryland, Hubbard soon began his career as a freelance writer of multiple genres of fiction, most notably science fiction. Today, Hubbard still holds the Guinness World Record for the most published works by one author at 1,084. The L. Ron Hubbard House contains a bright display of a sampling of his published works. Hubbard then served in the Navy, but thereafter he continued as a freelance writer until 1950 when he found commercial success in the sale of his book Dianetics, The Modern Science of Mental Health. He then devoted his time promoting Dianetics through public lectures and demonstrations of its contents. Over the next five years, the theology of Scientology continued to evolve, and around 1955, Hubbard established the Academy of Scientology at the adjoining townhouses of 1810 and 1812 19th Street Northwest. L. Ron Hubbard and his third wife, Mary Sue Hubbard, leased a brick and limestone house at 1835 19th Street, which was built in 1915. The church also utilized space within 1817 19th Street, a mansard roof brick building erected in 1889. Within the L. Ron Hubbard house, you can visit the chapel room where Hubbard, as Scientology's first minister, lectured and performed wedding ceremonies. His lectures were recorded on Ampex tape recorders and then reduplicated for wider distribution. Upstairs, the church restored both the outer communications office, where Hubbard's staff carried out the work of the organization, as well as his inner office, where Hubbard created many of the church's administrative policies. With careful curation and presentation of various objects and artifacts, both office spaces bear a striking resemblance to historical photographs of these spaces when they were used by Hubbard and his staff. As one can see from this advertisement placed in the Evening Star in September of 1957, the church held regular services at this location on Sunday evenings. At one point in 1969, the Evening Star reported that the founding church occupied 1810, 1812, 1817, and 1835 19th Street. If we take a look at a map, one could easily argue this block gave birth to modern Scientology. However, Scientology's initial success here was not without its challenges. In 1963, this block would have been blockaded by U.S. Marshals, who raided the 1810 and 1812 adjoining buildings. Pursuant to the order of a federal judge in a suit brought against the church by the Food and Drug Administration in what was one of the church's first of many disputes with the federal government. In 1971, the founding church advertised its location at 1810 19th Street instead of 1812. Interestingly, the ad asked readers whether they wanted better jobs and offered a free IQ test. Many of us may not know much about Scientology, but we may be familiar with the church's standing invitation for the public to take personality tests, 
as this practice continues today. This recruitment tactic was evidently successful, as the church placed an ad seeking a new building in 1959, although the church did not actually move until the early 1970s. Sometime after 1971, the founding church decided to relocate two and a half blocks west to 2125 S Street Northwest, an Indiana limestone Georgian Revival style building constructed in 1896. Although this building is now a private condo building, from 1974 through at least 1981, the founding church advertised its Sunday evening services at this location. This was a period of great tension between the entire Church of Scientology and the federal government over a number of issues, including the Internal Revenue Service's refusal to consistently grant the church or its subsidiaries tax-exempt status. Strained relations culminated in 20 agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation raiding this location in 1977. Contents from the raid were used as evidence against several members of the church who, including Hubbard's third wife, Mary Sue Hubbard, were convicted on charges related to a criminal conspiracy to burglarize government offices. Despite these conflicts with the federal government, in 1993, the Church of Scientology reached a settlement with the Internal Revenue Service and gained recognition as a tax-exempt organization operated exclusively for religious and charitable purposes. Shortly thereafter, in 1995, the founding Church of Scientology relocated once again to the historic Fraser Mansion at 1701 20th Street Northwest. This Beau Arts mansion was constructed in 1890 by the architectural firm Hornblower and Marshall, who as you may recall from my prior episodes also designed part of the original structure to the nearby Phillips Collection, as well as the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History. Today, this structure is used as the Church of Scientology's National Affairs Office because in 2009, the Founding Church relocated once again. This time, the Founding Church moved to its current location at 1424 16th Street Northwest. The seven-story concrete, brick, and stone building erected in 1917 is located across the street from the Carnegie Institution of Washington and just a few blocks from the White House. During the grand opening ceremony for the founding church, DuPont Circle Advisory Neighborhood Commissioner Mike Silverstein proclaimed, It is fitting that the founding church of Scientology has kept its roots here in the DuPont Circle community. Indeed, the nexus between the church of Scientology and the neighborhood of DuPont Circle is more than one might imagine. If you would like to visit the L. Ron Hubbard House, it's open to the public and they appreciate it if you give them a call ahead to schedule your appointment. I would like to thank the staff of the Elrond Hubbard House for the many courtesies they extended in making this episode of the History Hat possible. Subscribe by clicking on the History Hat logo to continue to explore the mysteries of history.